Welcome back to episode 100. This is the episode I've been waiting to do for, well, 100 episodes really I suppose, but um, I've been planning it for quite a long time. Trying to think of something really crazy and good I could do with the car, and I came up with, I want to do a 100 mile road trip. So 100th episode, 100 mile road trip. Um, the car's only ever done, well I think it's done 35 miles in total, of, we're adding up all the little uh, journeys that I've been on. I think the biggest I've ever done is 16 miles with a break halfway, so 13, uh, uh, two eights, I don't want to think about that. Um, so this is way, way bigger. Uh, and I'll plot out the map and I'll flash it up in a second so you can see what I'm going to do. Um, there will be some complications. I'm sure something's going to break, it always does uh, on these sort of things. Uh, and I don't have all the specialist audio equipment, so it, some of the sound may a bit, be a bit dubious. So apologies for that in advance. But I'm determined to do the trip. I really want to get it done. Uh, I'm being helped by a friend of mine called Stuart who runs Sports and GT channel. I'll uh, add a link in the description. Uh, go and have a visit. He's doing up a, a Lotus Esprit, an early, early Lotus Esprit, which is well worth a watch. Uh, but I'm not going to waffle much today. I just want to get into the video, get out there driving and uh, basically just get it done, see how it does. Um, as ever, click like, click subscribe. Uh, leave me some comments. Tell me if you hear anything dubious along the way. Uh, but let's just get in there and see how it goes. This commemorates the 100th episode of my series. I'm just trying to carefully reverse out. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm a bit worried. Um, the most I've ever done in one journey is 13 miles. So this is quite a bit longer. I think the longest leg of the journey will be about 36 uh, miles over to Farringdon. And uh, I hope it's okay. It should be all right. I mean, I have tested the car quite a lot. It's been running a lot in my garage. Uh, when I did the 13 mile trip the other day, I then left it in the garage, getting it really up to temperature, really warm. Uh, and it seemed all right. The, the electric fan even came on, which I didn't even realize worked. So that's a bonus. Um, let's just get on with it, see how we get on. Um, I'm expecting it to take about three hours. So obviously a lot of this can be fast forwarded. Uh, You'll see the interesting bits. Hopefully there aren't any interesting bits, AKA it doesn't fall down, uh, break down. Now this episode is taking quite a long time to put together because I've been on the trail of trying to locate what's causing the clump. You may hear it every now and then, although it is a lot better since I found the spring clip rip missing on one of the, uh, the rear driver's side brakes. But the clunk, is, the clunk is still there and I don't know what it is. But I'm fairly happy that it's not dangerous, hence I'm doing this journey. Um, but up until I found the brake um, spring clip was missing, I really wasn't sure what was going on. And I didn't like to drive the, the thought of driving the car far, knowing that there might be pieces of suspension falling off and stuff like that. But I've been over everything. Everything seems good, it seems correct. I'm very happy that it's a solid car. Um, I still don't know what the clunking is though. I actually have a clunk in front and back, so it's kind of matching, which is quite nice, I think. So our first stop is going to be Farringdon. It's a beautiful little market town that sits between the River Thames and the Vale of Whitehorse. Now, I've never actually been to Farringdon, mainly because they built a bypass. It cost £1.6 million back in 1979, which is coincidentally the same year that this car was built, and I figure we should just drive on that just to say hi. So Farringdon came and went. We're now in Lechlade, which is a beautiful little town. Uh, if I can, I'll turn the camera. You can have a quick look. Uh, it's a fantastic looking little village. I just decided to reroute quickly so you can see a bit of the village. It's really picturesque.
So we're just arriving into the uh, tiny picturesque village of Bybury. Now this is described as one of the most beautiful villages in Britain. It's got uh, apparently the most photographed row of cottages uh, anywhere in Britain. Um, it is really spectacular. If I can, I'll pan the camera around so you can have a look. Oh, the tick over is very high, 1500 tick over. Um, so far, pretty eventful, uh, uneventful journey. It's just driven here without any issues at all, which is really nice. Uh, we're stuck at traffic lights at the moment, and off we go. Right, and where we're heading is the classic motor hub, which is a, um, it, they deal with car storage, car sales, and car transportation. Now, I came here many years ago and test drove a Testarossa, actually, which is amazing. Um, and periodically they do open days, coffee mornings and things like that. We're just going to drop in for a coffee, maybe even a pastry or something. Um, if I can find where we're going, I need to just check with the map again. We are en route. Yep, we're good. Um, so we're going to have a quick coffee there, check the car over, just check everything's okay. It's driven now for something like 35 miles, I guess. It's at 97 degrees temperature, the engine, and we've got 58% petrol. So we're not doing bad. The temperature's been well behaved. It's sat most of the time at about 96. It's picked up now because we're going a little bit slower. Um, probably going about 20, 25 miles an hour through these country roads. Um, it's tiny little lanes we're driving down now. The problem with country lanes is when something comes the other way, you get that situation with the van. Luckily, he backed up. Uh, I don't mind giving way, of course. It was just a problem with this. It's a bit difficult getting it back, to, you know, reversing and trying to find somewhere for it to slip into. Right, we made it. Pretty straightforward drive. We're at the Classic Motor Hub. I'll give you a few shots around. I'm going to stop and have lunch, maybe like a sausage baguette or something like that. And then we're off on our trip over to Burford. Um, this has been about 36 miles, I think it is, uh, and no issues at all, which is <laughs> quite amazing, really. Uh, but let's see if it will start and uh, get on with the next part of the journey. So this next stretch of road has been made famous by Harry Metcalf on his uh, YouTube channel called Harry's Garage. Now this is where he takes all of his cars and he blasts. Um, so just around the corner here is where he does his famous, right, let's make sure we're in gear, uh, does his famous uh, spur up the hill, which we'll try. Uh, I have a lot less power than he does in most of his cars. Uh, here we go, coming up to it. It's very uphill, but surprisingly steep. Go. I think we have to change down. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> it's surprisingly steep hill. Um, 
this in third gear was only just accelerating, uh, which is quite comical. So across this journey, what I've uh, learned about the 920 is that it actually drives really well. It's very smooth. Um, okay, mine has got many problems, I know that. But it's surprisingly smooth. It handles the bumps really nicely. Um, it doesn't crash, it doesn't sort of skid around or anything. And my front suspension, you know, I've set up the geometry there, so that is gonna be way off target. This is another famous Harry Metcalf's corner. Just brace down here a little bit. And these are horrendously bumpy roads. So you can probably tell by the way the camera is bouncing around all the time. Um, but the car copes really well. I mean, yeah, there are still a lot of clunks and things, but it's doing all right. to Bista Heritage now. So Bista Heritage is a car, I don't know what you call it, like a little town almost. Uh, there's lots of automotive uh, engineering companies on there um, and it's become famous certainly amongst uh, uh, petrol heads for doing the scramble. The scramble is, I think they do it every month or something and it's a drive there with what you've got and everyone looks around their own car, you know, each other's cars. It's changed slightly in recent years where it's become a lot more professional uh, and they choreograph a lot of the displays and things now. And you see some amazing cars there, really impressive. Um, it's situated actually on RAF Bista, uh, the old RAF base. Uh, and it's a really nice, very historic site to go on. Um, my thumbnail photo was taken there, if uh, you go and have a look at that uh, quickly. It's a really nice place.
final leg of the journey, probably about four miles as the crow flies, uh, five, six, seven miles if I drive it. Um, I think I owe the uh, journey probably about another 10 miles. So I may go up and down the bypass a couple of times just to uh, hit the magic 100. Um, we've hit traffic, really bad traffic today. So um, I'm not sure how happy the car is. It's sort of just ticking along. Fuel pump's making quite a racket, I suppose that's normal. And I can hear the, the electric fan at the front sparking up every now and then, so it's definitely hot. Uh, and it's definitely trying to cool itself down, which is good. Uh, but it's been faultless, I've got to say. Not to jinx it, I know we're not home yet, but it has been amazing. The only thing that's gone wrong, comically, is the thing I've built, the, th the thermometer. That packed up at around 60 miles, I guess. Um, I've not had a look to see why, but it just gave up. We've got no temperature and no fuel gauge. The fuel was down to 50, I think it started at 61% and it came down to about 53, I think it got down to, and then it packed up. Uh, not a major problem, I know there's enough fuel in there. I've got another 20 litres sitting behind me in a, in a jerry can, whatever you call it. Um, but it's been really good, really impressed with how the cars behave and I actually really enjoy driving it. It's really solid on the road, uh, surprisingly soft, as in it copes the bumps well, very smooth, the seats are comfortable. Uh, I feel better than if I drove my BMW after what is this, about three hours of driving. Uh, and sure, we got out every now and then, little stops here and there, but pretty much been sat down for three hours, so I feel okay. As if by magic the fuel gauge started working as well. Uh, just as well because I don't have the my electric one anymore so uh, that's very handy no temperature gauge which would have been nice I know that one works so I'm pretty sure it's just the connectors at the back of the uh, the cluster but nice to see the fuel gauge poor car I feel sorry for her now we've sat in the traffic now for probably about 15 20 minutes and I can either hear the fan up the front whirring or the fuel pump at the back humming uh, it's not, not enjoying it it's very hot today it's about I guess it's probably 24, 25 degrees out, but the car's been driven now for nearly three hours uh, with hardly a break, so it's really hot, really not enjoying itself, but still running. <laughs> Right, and that's it. What an epic journey. That was the most amazing day. Um, the extra driving, the route when I plotted it out, Google Maps said it'd take three hours. I think I left it at 10.30 in the morning, got back just after 3.30, so that's a little bit longer. And admittedly, we did stop for uh, lunch, but that was the only stop, um, and to snap a photo for the uh, Bista Heritage. Everything else was just driving, so the car's done amazing. It's probably been running for close to five hours I bet, uh, and not a single issue. The only issue is, which made me laugh, uh, the only fault was the, um, the little digital readout I made with an Arduino, you know I like my electronics, uh, it just stopped working about 60 miles into the journey, so I had no temperature and no uh, fuel. But then shortly after, my proper fuel gauge sprung up and started working again. I think I took a, a quick video of it. Uh, it just made me laugh that um, you know the only thing I built actually broke. Uh, but the car did amazing. Really, really chuffed with that. Uh, what great fun. Uh, now I need to think of something bigger to do for the 200th episode or which, whichever one I, I decide to do next, uh, next big road trip. Uh, as ever, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to wrap up now. Leave me a comment, leave me, uh, click the subscribe button and I'll see you next time.